Oh my goodness. Is it good now? I can promise you one thing in this talk. I will not do a sultry voice. <laughs> that is what I can promise you. All right, so at the end of today's presentation, we will do a prize drawing for a best page forward book description. So everyone in the first nine rows, and you did a wonderful job accepting my bribe. Yes, a round of applause, everyone, for yourselves, for yourselves. So we'll do that towards the end today. Today, we're talking about less time, more readers, slow and steady marketing ideas for the busy author. But there's a bit of a twist, so I'm excited to get to it. Right away, I'm going to tell you five things that have helped me market my books faster. This, these are some of the things that I used to get faster and more efficient with my book marketing, with just generally. And then uh, I'm going to you know, do one of those little record scratches. So first, batch process your marketing efforts. So what I mean by that is if you're, you write a Facebook post every week or you do a TikTok video every week, do four all at once so that you have them for every week. Do them at once because then there's less task switching which is the exact thing that can slow you down, the exact thing that can make you not get as much done. So for efficiency, batch process as much as you can. And you could do this with anything. Emails, you could do this with social media, you could do this with anything that you are creating, you can make more at once. Schedule your marketing ahead of time. How many of us, and you can do a whoop, because that's been the thing we've been doing, um, how many of you have ever tried to, in the last week before a book launch, throw the whole thing together? <laughs> All right, cool. So if you don't do that, um, if you schedule more of it ahead of time and you get it on your calendar or you use software, like there's a task management software we like to use with Best Page Forward called Asana, A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. We love to do this because it helps it uh, so that we're not in a rush screaming as we try to finish our, uh, our particular launches as well. When you get distracted, change your environment. Get out of the house or lock your door or set boundaries. Of the three things, that's probably the hardest, is setting those boundaries. But that is a healthy way to make sure your family members know I am working without just waiting and screaming at them when they pass your boundary about seven times over, which happens to all of us. Um, so remember to try going somewhere different. And you can even train your brain that a certain place in your house or a certain uh, place in your town is where you work on this stuff. Jamie Davis, who, who, who heads the AV crew and who is amazing. Uh, Jamie, if, you, if you're friends with him on Facebook, you see he always goes to that special cafe where he has a donut waiting for him when he finishes his writing. That is him training his brain and training his stomach to write more words. Try a Pomodoro timer or even just any regular timer. Uh, 30 minutes of doing a task and then 10 minutes or 15 minutes of not doing it and back and forth and back and forth. That doesn't work for me personally, but it does work for others. I've used something called egg timer, which is E dot G-G-T-I-M-E-R, and I will set it so it has a countdown in my face on my computer that says 30 minutes and it's counting down. And it, when I started, uh, when I started writing for different blogs and whatnot, it was just pay per as many articles as you could write. So I would set it for 20 minutes so I could get one done in 20 minutes and then move on to the next one. Absolutely the same thing works for mark any marketing task. And then I already mentioned Asana, but Asana is one of many different task management softwares where you can create a task like here's my launch and here are all these subtasks in my launch. Remember to uh, research my keywords, remember to submit to certain sites, and then you can duplicate it. And the next launch, you still have that to-do list, rather than trying to remember exactly what you did two to five months ago or a year ago. It doesn't work. 
Uh, you always forget something. But if you have a list or you have this task that it can be duplicated, you can do it a couple times over. So how many of you here are like, yeah, this is like what I came to this talk for? OK, a couple of people. So, <laughs> so I'm glad that you guys got what you got. But this is about more than time management. This is about more than getting more marketing done at once. We need to change our perspective on getting things done. Because you came to this probably because you said, well, I need to do 20 things that I just learned in this conference. How am I going to do those 20 things? And I'm going to tell you, trying to get 20 things done well is a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. You're stretched too thin. It's not going to happen. And you don't have to do it all. You don't. And we've seen a lot of successful people at this event. And it seems like they're really good at doing it all. But if they had tried to do it all at the beginning, they would not be speaking at this event. Because they got good at one thing first. And that is why we need to try to think like they were thinking when they had their moment of success. We see them doing so many things right, and we think that's why they made it. But in reality, these authors struggled just like us to find balance. They had no time to figure it out, just like us. But what got them to the next level wasn't fitting eight hours a day of work into four and mastering every marketing method. It, that's what we think. How many of you genuinely thought that at some point in your career? Because I absolutely did. They're, so, they're successful because they're so good at everything. But that isn't how they got there. They got really good at one writing thing and one marketing thing. And they focused on those two things. Now, with the writing thing, it's usually writing to market. Not always, but at least 80% of the time, it's about writing to a specific market. There have been multiple talks on that at this conference. If you haven't seen them, watch the replays. Pick up what you can from those. I'm not going to talk about writing to market today. That's the writing thing that probably you're going to need to focus on. But the marketing thing that we should concentrate on, we're going to figure out how to pick that today. And that, don't you mean those, Brian? No, I mean singular that, that one thing that you're going to focus on. Yeah, eventually you can do more than one thing. But if you want to be successful, I mean, if you don't want to be successful, that's fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. And if you don't want to make more money and you have other aims, that's fine too. But I have a feeling. Most people here do want to be successful, do want to reach goals that are related to their finances. Can I get a whoop for everyone who agrees with that for them? There we go. The loudest whoop we've gotten. <laughs> Brian the Bag is very impressed with that one. So we're going to focus on what we can do to achieve that goal, and usually that means picking one thing. So here's what you're going to learn today. How to choose the path of less but better. I know, your heart might have dropped at less but better. Uh, to give yourself a greater chance to succeed, why small regular actions can lead to massive growth in less time, and which marketing method you could focus on to cater to your strengths, and you're going to learn a whole lot more. Let's talk about FOMO versus JOMO. You've all heard of FOMO. Have you heard of FOMO? Fear of missing out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know it's opposite? One of my mentors, Pat Flynn, shared with me the concept of JOMO, the joy of missing out. And while we're all trying to do it all out of fear, it results in stress, spreading yourself too thin, burnout, Y'all, if you're like, I can't get the words today and haven't been able to get them the last few days, not during this conference, but at some point in the past, it was probably the beginning of burnout. It wasn't, I'm not working hard enough. It was probably burnout. But embracing just one thing can help you spend less time to get better results. And you can avoid the distractions. You can avoid the task switching of trying to do everything. Now. There are a few downsides to the concept of less but better, but one of the upsides might be health. 
happiness, joy, the joy of missing out. So let's be a little more joyful about that. How do we double down on it? One of the reasons few people try to do only one marketing thing is because they see other authors having success in multiple areas. But we don't always see how these folks feel about it. I know an author uh, I spoke with recently who has had great success on TikTok. And that's one of the big buzzwords of the conference, of course, right? Because a lot of people have had quick success on TikTok. But this person I'm speaking with who had went from under $500 to over $10,000 a month is miserable. Because she doesn't like it. But she feels this need to keep doing it. And that's tough. It's like, it, it matters, results matter. But it, our happiness matters too. We can't just keep doing something that like carves out our innards and our, and our brain because that is not going to make us have long-term success with this. So yes, you're gonna have to do hard things. You're gonna have to do things you don't like. You still have to take out the trash, my wife says. Um, but those are parts of the normal business. Any normal business, you have to do hard things. But you do have a choice. You do have choices in the matter. And there are multiple paths to the top. There are not like, well, if I miss out on this thing, I'll never make it. And it's like, no, probably not. Like you, you can find a different path. There are multiple ways up the mountain. And you get to choose, well, I want this kind of life. And it's like, well, if doing that thing every day, if running big Kickstarter launches or something like that is, sounds terrifying to you, but you're like, I think that's what I need to do. Well, you don't necessarily need to because you want to be happier and you want to do what aligns with your strengths and what you enjoy doing. So if you're going to have to work on something on a daily basis, make sure that it fills your bucket, that it makes you happier. I love giving presentations and such. How, how many of y'all have seen one of my online webinars or challenge? Awesome. And the virtual people, they're all raving, raising their hands too. So, um, but I like doing that. And so it fills my bucket and I do it a lot. And I probably do it a lot more than a lot of people, a lot of teachers, because I enjoy it. And so if you can make the thing that helps you reach more readers, something that you enjoy doing, it's a win-win. Let's have more win-wins and not, well, I have to do it because so-and-so is doing it. Because they aren't you. And you can, you can absolutely be yourself with this. Now, the, I bet seeing these words, <laughs> seeing these words sound like, it just makes you feel bad. You're like, consistent mediocrity? No, I want to be great. I want to have greatness. Most people who are perceived of as great are awesome at consistent mediocrity. You don't have to write 10 times faster than everyone. You, you don't have to force yourself to publish a book every three weeks to get ahead. And for most, these efforts lead to burnout and health troubles. A lot of authors I've talked to who write very, very fast also have big medical bills. So you have to be careful about that. So it's much more sustainable to do less on a consistent basis, less in a way that you can, you can consistently repeat. Even if it seems like it's not much. Even if it seems like it's not as much as big time people. Like I bet the person in the gold room, you're like, I want to do exactly what they're doing. Because they're amazing. I that got locked out of this room. I had to come into that room. No. But um, it seems like it's not as big as what they're doing or what they're doing. But that's OK. Let's say you have your best writing day ever. You bust out 5,000 words in a single day, in a single sitting. You're ahead of your word count goal. But if you can't keep it up, you'll have fewer words than someone who spent less time and just wrote 1,000 words per day, but kept it going for seven straight days. Less in a given day can mean more overall if you can keep that up. So it's absolutely the same when it comes to your marketing. Making something that is consistent and maybe in your uh, perception, mediocre, that eventually leads to great skill. I, uh, I, I remember the old uh, uh, example of we had a, a photography uh, teacher gave his students two different ideas. 
One, you work on making the perfect photo, and one, you take one photo a day for 30 straight days. And the people who did the one photo a day for 30 straight days, theirs was so much better at the end. And it's because of the importance of consistent mediocrity. Now, should we all go out there and do a TikTok video every day, right now? Not necessarily. I'm sure some of that, some of you were like, oh my God, I would rather die. But um, like those people going by. No, um, anyone who's been in my talks t this weekend, all these huge loud noises behind, we've been referring to them, we. We've been, re we've been referring to them as bodies going to the Bally's morgue, and it just has gotten so bad. It's like the worst joke in the entire conference. Tell Craig it's the worst joke in the, no, please don't. Um, but just because something is the hot trend doesn't mean you should be doing it. It doesn't mean you have the aptitude for doing it, and that's okay. I'm a big fan of Becca Syme. Any Becca Syme fans in here? Yeah, she's awesome. Her Quick Cast podcast is great. Her books, and of course, we're going to be table mates at the Friday Rave, so come over and see both of us. But she talks about author strengths, and, and this is really, really important. Because we all have a certain personality, we all have certain strengths and skills that may not align with the thing you heard on some podcast. It may not align with the thing you think has to be done. And that's okay. It's a good idea to try things like the Clifton Strength Finder test. You can learn more about yourself. Uh, it does cost some money, but it's really, really good. I recommend it for every author um, because this is going to help you figure out a little bit of what you are stronger at. So you want to start by choosing an achievable goal that's focused on something you can control. Is it an achievable goal to say, next year I want to have $5,000 in sales. No, you can't control that because sales are not up to you. So we need to focus on things that we can, like you can set those goals and those are fun aspirational things that we need to set things we can control because hey, when you consistently achieve something you can control, it makes you feel better and there's the happiness, there's the health. So you can certainly have the big book sales number in mind, but let's start with something you can do. I market, this is just an, an example, I market my books for 20 minutes each weekday, sometime between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Something like this, you can control, because it's, I'm just going to spend my time doing a certain thing. You can control that, and you can make it so that you are consistent with that thing. Now, it seems tiny, but that is the point. There are a whole bunch of books out there on tiny habits and small, achievable things, because this is a huge secret to productivity for a lot of people. So consistency is more important than almost anything else in publishing. It's more important than a big blast of success, a big blast of words. You want to have consistency. So I want you to think about setting this goal related to your actions, related to things you can control, because that's going to set you up for more success. Then you're going to pick one tiny action. So you want to look at your strengths, look at what you like to do. And the second half of this talk, we're going to go into all sorts of things you might like and what some actions you could. I'm trying to make it easy on y'all so you don't have to think too much. Because there's been a lot of thinking. How many of you have already felt like there's been a fire hose of information beamed into your brain? Yes, I see all the hands in virtuals, like two, raising two hands. They're raising two drinks at home because they're like, we can drink here. Um, <laughs> So pick the smallest possible action that you can take towards the thing that you want to try. So like our achievable goal, you'll want to do something tiny that moves you a little bit ahead each day. If I was writing, this would be the equivalent of saying, I write 100 plus words per day each weekday. And some of you are like, well, I'm way better than Brian. I write 500 words, I write 1,000. It's about it being small because you can do more than that thing but you want to be consistent that you hit the smaller goal. It's been said one of the ways Jerry Seinfeld became a success is because he wrote one joke a day. First for a month, then for months, then for years in a row, then for decades in a row. And he called it not breaking the chain. So pick a thing that you aren't going to break the chain on, that you are going to be able to consistently keep doing. 
and you can do more, but you should absolutely avoid skipping it. If you do, the unthinkable happens and you skip a day, never skip two days in a row. Start the chain again the very next day. Now we're gonna go into some examples. Let's say you like writing. Well, what are some small marketing things? Some people like editing better than writing. Some people like other things. I'm glad that you're laughing, because obviously you like writing. <laughs> but let's say you want to write to market your books. You can write short stories related to your book or series as marketing. You can give these out as email freebies, email list exclusives, contributions to anthologies. This doesn't sound like marketing, but it is. This can be a marketing tactic. You may also get a lot of value out of writing Kindle shorts or serialized stories through the Kindle Vela program. It used to be the case, Kindle Vela will thank me later, it used to be the case that you, could, you had to keep your stories that you would write in Kindle Vela and you wouldn't be able to put them into, uh, into Amazon. You couldn't publish them. But now you can, and you can put them in Kindle Unlimited. And so there's more you can do now with these. And so that might be a thing you decide to do for marketing is to write more of these shorter books. Facebook is great for people who like writing because you can write posts on Facebook. So you can write longer detailed posts or shorter, funnier posts on a regular basis. And of course, you can just focus on, well, I'm gonna write more books. And that can be marketing. That is allowed to be marketing. You want to market research, because remember, we talked about one writing thing and one marketing thing. You still want to write where there is a rabid audience of fans, but you can absolutely publish more books, and that can be your 80% focus of your marketing. The important thing is, whatever you choose as what I want my, did, did y'all know that uh, the word priorities is a bastardization of the language? Because Priorities is an English version of the original Latin priority, which was not, it, it was not plural. Priority was how it started. So when you say I have priorities, you are just saying, oh my gosh, I'm just screwing up Latin here. And so you need to stick to one priority because a bunch of Romans are rolling over in their graves. Every time you say priority, they're rolling. No. Um, so, but focus on that 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the results come from 20% of the actions. So if you focus on fewer things and make them better, you can have more success. So what would a minimum viable product for writing be? So minimum viable product is basically the least you can do to make progress. So let's see what your marketing focus of writing might look like on a daily basis. Your goal could be and it's going to seem small to a lot of you. I write at least 15 minutes or 200 words per day between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. or 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. The time doesn't matter. What matters is the specificity. I hit this mark at this time per day on these days per week. That's what's important. Because if you give yourself wiggle room, you're going to wiggle you're gonna wiggle. I, I, this happens every time I, I, I try to limit my calories. I'm like, oh, let's add another snack, let's add another thing. And I'm just like, no, nope, now I'm doubling the amount that I'm supposed to be eating. And it's like, you can't always give yourself wiggle room. You have to be as specific as possible in these goals that you're setting. Let's say you're using social media as your writing marketing tactic. You could write one post per week every Friday, and you could batch process these. You could actually write all of them at a certain time or write several in bulk, but it's, it's about every week I post on this specific day. Now, yeah, you might be saying, Brian, most of these people who are successful on these platforms are posting every day, but that isn't necessarily how they started. Start with the minimum viable product. Start with the smallest thing you can do and then you can build on that later. It isn't about trying to set the sky high goal, it's about the strong habit. We want stronger habits with fewer things. Stronger habits with fewer things. It sounded so good in my head that I had to say it twice. So, 
Once the habit is developed, then you can move into a slightly larger minimum viable product. But let's start with that. Do you like taking pictures? Do you like uh, uh, sharing pictures? You can take pictures of your, this is another whole realm of marketing you could do. So that was writing. Let's talk about images and pictures. You could take pictures of your writing space, your computer screen. We've all seen the 20 books posts of, with the drink and the everything. I, I said the end. Like, that is a form of marketing in a way. You can even take a picture of your animal writing buddy, if you have one, and post them to Instagram. You can gather up all the locations that have inspired you, and you can share those on a board in Pinterest. If you like pictures and editing, you might even be able to take some of those photos and turn them into TikToks, Instagram Reels, or Facebook Reels. Those aren't all videos. Some of them are photo collages. And if you like taking photos, you can turn those into Reels. You can turn those into TikToks. Now, if the above ideas made you cringe, this isn't the focus for you, and that's fine. But if you had that little like, oh, I love doing that stuff. Pay attention to that, y'all. If, if you think, I love, I kind of like doing that stuff, don't ignore it. Don't say, well, I could never make success off that. I could never sell more books off of that. People are doing that. Plenty of people have sold uh, plenty of books just taking pictures and using them on Instagram. So we have to remember Sometimes the thing we like and the thing that aligns with our strengths is right there and we've just never put our effort into it. But we can because we've been trying to do all the things, but we can do fewer. What are some minimum viable products for taking pictures? Keep the initial output really small. One picture per day, five pictures per week that are meant for one to two posts per week. That's fine at first. You don't have to do more than that. If you're doing the editing stuff, like for the videos, one post per week. Eventually, sure, you might want to upgrade, but start with doing it this way for a couple months to get that habit stabilized. And it's the goal not to break the chain, but do not be hard on yourself with all of this, because it's hard. It's hard to keep habits, especially if you've been used to, I'm going to do 20 things and learn from 20 courses all at once, because I can do it. I'm the only one, <laughs> but uh, everyone has 20 things they're learning. Everything, everyone has 20 courses they're trying to learn from, and no one's doing it well. So let's stop. <laughs> stop the insanity, and let's try to focus on just getting this good habit started. So one thing, this is from Atomic Habits, a great book by James Clear. Trying to identify, I know I heard a woo. I didn't even prompt the woo and there was a woo. And that makes me feel like woo. So have a little bit of self-talk that says you identify with this. Like I am the photographer for my indie author career. Or I am the contemporary romance author. Or I am, those I am statements are very, very powerful. A little bit woo woo, but we just said woo a lot. So, you like videos, you like taking videos, you like recording videos. In fact, I just realized I totally didn't do my video earlier. So let's do our video now, because I like videos. Let's all cheer for videos. I'm going to have to edit the beginning, because you didn't start the cheer till one second in. But you know, that's the thing. I like editing, so that's totally fine. If you watch videos or you love creating videos, yeah, you can do some talking head kind of videos on TikTok where you just talk to the camera. If you've got a flair for comedy, maybe you try some of those trend posts, those meme videos. I have seen some funny authors doing these and they love that stuff, so they're good at it. But that doesn't mean that it's for everybody and that's totally okay. And these can go on TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. If comedy isn't your thing, but you like filming things that aren't you, there's page flip videos where you just film someone flipping the page. There's, uh, you can have little mini self-made trailers if you like that sort of thing, and use that for TikToks or Reels. I think I tried to suppress a burp, but it still made like a little bit of a rumble, which is hilarious. So 
there's a, and that's really hard on a webinar. If you ever do webinars and you're like talking into a mic and you're like, I so have to burp, it's coming up. It's so awkward, but it's only for me in a room. And I just have to pretend like 100 people didn't hear me. So another thing, and this is pretty new, like I don't think a lot of authors are taking advantage of this. If you like videos, the things that are on Reels and TikTok work really well in YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts is having, having a lot of growth, or it's the same vertical style. But it's basically YouTube trying to copy TikTok, but they're, getting a lot, they're putting a lot of attention into it. So too many authors have tried short videos even though they don't enjoy it. How many people tried TikTok and hated it? Okay. So this slide isn't for you, right? Because you didn't like it and now you know that. You don't have to do it because you didn't enjoy it. So if you keep trying to do things that you don't like, it will lead to burnout. And I don't want that for any of you. But what are some minimum viable products for videos? One per week, please don't try to do it all. If you do decide to do more than one type of platform, there are types of software. I know there's a million of them. One that I know is repurpose.io, but there's a million of them that will actually post to multiple sites for you. So you, you will wanna be careful if you're using a TikTok sound because that sound is not necessarily cleared for use on Instagram, YouTube shorts, etc. But if you did your own original sound, that's totally fine. And there are some out there who will say, to make, have success on these platforms, you have to post multiple times per week, multiple times per day. I did that for like four months, post multiple times per day. And I loved it, but it took my energy from other areas of my business. And so I decided I was gonna stop. Also, because I was doing it in the parking lot of my, uh, five-year-old's daycare and then we started going to kindergarten there's nowhere to stop in the pickup line the drop-off line to do TikToks. they would hate me it's like oh there's that TikTok dad again <laughs> so you need to make it fit with your life you absolutely need to make it fit with your life and so you can eventually try to do more let's make sure you like the process first so we have to get through a lot in I think about 13 minutes there was no timer person today is there oh it's by your feet I can't see that Chris I can't, yes, please. I'm sorry you have to have a tablet up there. Don't hold it, no, that's fine. Be relaxed, be natural, be natural, no. So let's go a little bit faster with these last couple. Do you like stats? And everyone's like, no. So, okay, Lars liked it. But um, a lot of authors use ad platforms like Amazon, Facebook, BookBub, despite really hating stats and data. And this is from the Amazon ad guy saying, well, not everyone likes Amazon ads. You don't always have to do Amazon ads. You don't always have to do Facebook ads, especially if you hate it. I don't want to force anybody to do what they hate. But if you do enjoy it, and you do enjoy figuring out your return on investment, then it makes sense. Like, every person who's been an accountant in a former life, they love this stuff because it makes sense. So the big thing most authors use these ad platforms for is direct sale kind of ads on to get more sales on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, even their Shopify store if they're selling direct. But that's not the only way. You can also try running mailing list ads through Facebook, sending uh, potential readers to a landing page to sign up for your newsletter. It doesn't all have to be about getting sales now. It can be about getting readers later. Now the trouble is, and I think some of you might relate to this one, is you try to make advertising your 80% thing. And you try to make TikTok your 80% thing. And you try to make social media your 80% thing. Y'all, that's 240. <laughs> Unless you're like, I'm a 240 kind of person, I don't recommend doing this. So please remember that. For stats, the MVP, the minimum viable product, is spending an hour a week learning one platform. Obviously, I'm biased for Amazon ads with my five-day challenge, but it doesn't have to be Amazon ads. Once you've gathered some of the basics, the next step can be to set up one to five ads per week on the platform of your choice, reasonable bid and budget. We talked about that a little in some of my other talks this week. Data gathering is part of the fun, so you'll wanna set yourself up with time to analyze that data, to look at what does this mean? And when you look at what does it mean, 
don't go with your gut. Go with the, what the numbers say. Because the numbers are going to be like, I spent $4, turn it off. But we, we need to give some time for that data to percolate. I am not drinking my French press coffee after one minute of it brewing. I'm waiting 10 minutes, people. So wait 10 minutes. Nobody, I'm like, I'm such a coffee nerd because I used to work at Starbucks and nobody cared about this joke. But, um, but let it brew. Let it brew. Let that data brew. Now, I've spoken to multiple six-figure authors this week who abide by the philosophy I talk about, the split screen of royalties on one side, ad spend on the other side, and that is a very important part of this perspective for enjoying the stats. Do you like planning? Yeah, so we've got some planners here. See, this is one of those tough things. I usually like to stay very, very focused, but there's so many different types of people, I wanted to cover all y'all. If you're a planner, if you're a project manager type person, then big elaborate launches might be your thing because there's a lot of things to plan. You can try to put out more books per year. Some of them can be shorts. You can plan out big things like list swaps, Facebook page takeovers, and promotions to try to make each launch a splash. You can go beyond the typical launch, create special editions through things like Kickstarters or create the audiobook edition. You can do that sort of stuff. If you like launches, Kickstarters are really awesome for you. You can even go so far as to have relaunch parties for a book. If you get a new cover or a new description, take it to the nines and really do like a full-on new launch for this book. There's nothing, wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, sure, it's been out, but you've seen stores with grand reopenings before. This is exactly like that. Now, if you are a launcher, don't worry as much about the so-called evergreen promotion in between because your strength is launching. I'm a launcher. I'm not very good at the in-between stuff. And I've just decided to lean into that. So if you are a launcher and you like planning things, have big launches. And then don't stress out so much about the in-betweens. And I, I kind of skipped over it, but make each one a big celebration. Please, please, please. Now, it's hard to make an MVP, a minimum viable product for launches, because they take a lot of effort. But one thing you can do is set aside a little bit of time each day or each week to plan. I recommend having some planning time each week, some action time each week. So you're not just stuck in a planning circle. How many planners have had that happen to them? Just keep planning and planning and planning and never actually put it out. Make sure to take some action each week. Also, required. This is required. I put required in caps for a reason when I was writing it yesterday. Um, I say I'm a planner and I write this yesterday. But it is required to have time to decompress after. I once worked with a coach who works with six and seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. And, and first thing she said to me when we started working together, when are your vacations next year? First thing. That was before any other tips. The best advice that she gives six, seven, eight-figure entrepreneurs, people making $10 million a year, is when are your vacations next year? So please plan downtime after your launches. And even non-planners, you can do that too. That's totally fine. Remember, if you're trying to make planning and launching your 80% thing, you can't fit in another 80% thing. So please make your life simpler. Like people? And some of you are like, yay, and some of you are like, I don't know. I don't know about that. If working with people does fill your bucket, it makes you excited, then going to live events like this one may bring you some serious joy. You can go to local, regional, and national events where vendors sell their books and try your hand at that as well. If you haven't gotten over to see Ben Wolf, he, he has, he's the other person with the LED badge and he's wearing a Pac-Man shirt today, a Pac-Man blazer. If you haven't gotten to see him to talk about it, you absolutely should go over and say hi. Now he's going to be like, Brian, you just sent me 50 people. Um, he's great at this live event selling. And so if you do like people and you like that kind of outreach type selling, he's absolutely the kind of person to talk to. You can also spend your time on collaborations with other authors or even connecting for an anthology project of some kind. Another option. You might want to spend that 
people time, organizing a group of readers uh, with things like a reader team to get out those early copies with people who love talking about your book. I was just hanging out with a couple of great folks, uh, uh, Jonathan and uh, Jennifer Yanez, and they're, they're showing their short film that they created from uh, their books. They created a short film that now is go they did a Kickstarter for and now is going into festivals. And when I met with, so go see that. I think it's today in this room. Um, and they uh, were having a meetup with their readers who live in this region of the country. And people were driving in and they were like treating them to dinner. And if you like people, that's absolutely a sort of thing that you can do as well. Minimum viable product for people. Try to pick one event per month or quarter. Don't try to go to every single thing, at least at first. If you want to co-write or work on an anthology, an event like this is a great place to make those connections. If you haven't, uh, if your genre meetup hasn't happened yet, go to your genre meetup. Meet some of these people. They might be collaborators in the future. Yeah, it is pretty hot in this room. I saw you fanning yourself, and I'm like, dude, I'm hot up here for sure. Um, you're all sending your heat like four feet up, uh, which is exactly how tall I am. So. If you want to start a reader group, I had to work it into every presentation. Um, if you want to start a reader group, work on creating one post or one message per week to inspire engagement in that group. And with all of these, start small. Try not to do too much at once. Please focus on your joy. One of the best ways to avoid the burnout with this entire author marketing thing is to focus on your strengths and to focus on your joy. Some of you took notes on multiple sections, and that's fine, and I expected it, and I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> but I would like at some point for you to make a decision. Because if everything is your 80% thing, you're going to be at 400%. And that's just too much, and I don't want you to hurt from that. I would rather you had success working in one direction. Picking one of these for your 2023 focus may seem crazy, especially after you've learned every tip under the sun. But if you align your strengths and your heart with your prioritized marketing method, you're not just going to get more readers. Like you are going to get more readers, but you're going to get more than that. You're going to be happier. It comes back to being happy. It comes back to the joy. Because you deserve to be happy with all the hard work that you've been putting in with all of this. And if you stretch yourself in all the different directions, you might be less happy. And I absolutely don't want that to happen for you. I really love, and this is my love of people, I love getting the opportunity to teach and to speak with y'all and to, to make these wonderful connections so I do want to thank you for bringing me a little bit of joy today because you absolutely have. Now let's bring one of you some joy because we're going to do a prize drawing. So the way we work this is we counted out how many seats there are, how many rows there are. Brittany, where are you? There you are back there. Thank you. You're so tall. I should have seen you. Um, but let's do random.org, which if you're ever doing a giveaway uh, from a group, this is a great way to do it because... It keeps you from cheating. Not that you would. Not that any of you would. You guys are all great. So let's go look at the seat number, which is going to be 1 through 31 that way. 25. So it's probably in this final section, which is making your life easier, Brittany, because you're already over there. Sorry, this side of the room and this middle part of the room. Our apologies. All right. Now we'll do the row. Row 2. So seat 25, row 2. Brittany's going to go find that person. It keeps going over this corner, but it's random.org. All right, do we have our winner? Let's do a round of applause for our winner. You're going to get a best page forward book description. So let's recap what we talked about today. Forming just one. All the people that are like, now I'm going to leave. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Forming one habit around your marketing will help you succeed with that less but better mindset. Making one small thing related to that habit a regular action will help you see more growth in less time. 
80% of you are going to ignore that bullet. <laughs> but you don't have to. You get to choose happiness versus franticness. You get to choose that if you want to. It's up to you. Tough choice on all of you, I understand. If you choose a marketing method that you like, you will be happier. And your happiness does matter. So I want to thank all of you. This is effectively the end of the presentation. So thank you very much. So I've got one more talk to give this week, which is called 1,000 True Fans for Authors. This is about email marketing. It is bright and early, 8.15 a.m. on Thursday here in the Silver Room. Uh, bring your coffee, please. I know it's early. I'm going to be tired, too. But we're going to be tired together. I'm happy to take any and all questions you have about what, if you're like, well, here's what I like doing. What should I do? Talk to me in the hallway. I'll be all the way out past the lobby in the hallway. We are hosting an exclusive class for 20 Books Vegas attendees. You can take a, use your camera app, get the QR code, and you can sign up for it right there. So thank you all very much. Appreciate you so much. <laughs>